Welcome to Vegan Travel Guides. If, like me, you're a frequent traveller over about 35, then you probably remember lugging around guidebooks. And if you're under 30 or so, then you probably think the idea of buying a travel guide is ridiculous. Why would you pay for information when you can find it free online, right? Now, I bridge these two groups. In my younger backpacking days, I carried around a guidebook religiously. But I've also been travelling with devices to find vegan restaurants and book accommodation online ever since this first EPC came out in 2007. And for the last few years, I've been working here and on several dedicated research trips to Japan to create a unique new vegan travel guide to the country. So what's a vegan travel guide and why might you want one? First, let's start with what it's not. In the Japan Vegan Travel Guide, I recommend and review almost 100 restaurants and cafes right across the Japanese mainland. So why not use Happy Cow? Indeed, Happy Cow is great and I recommend that everyone use it to find nearby restaurants, write reviews and of course update it as you go. And there are links all through the book for this purpose, but more on that soon. Part of the inspiration for my vegan travel guide to Japan came from the Japan Vegan Pocket Guides, which were an absolute lifesaver back in the days before smartphones and Google Maps. But a vegan travel guide is not Happy Cow or a vegan pocket guide. It's certainly not a catalogue of vegetarian restaurants or a book of more in-depth vegan restaurant reviews, as useful as these can all be for many travellers. Vegan travel guides are essentially a fusion of these traditional vegan food and restaurant guides with traditional travel guides like these to make a complete travel and food guide written by vegans for travelling vegans and vegetarians. As a sign of authenticity, I took all the photographs in the Japan Vegan Travel Guide myself while in Japan. Also, all the photos shown throughout this video and also the maps and other diagrams are taken straight from the Japan Vegan Travel Guide. So this video serves to both explain what a vegan travel guide is and also to offer a sample of images from the Japan edition. Now, if you're a super organized, tech savvy person with lots of time on your hands, then you don't need this guidebook. You could instead carefully plan your own itineraries using online resources like Google, TripAdvisor, and of course, Happy Cow. In that case, what I can offer you is a saving of your time by presenting itineraries, maps, and travel information in one easy package which you can read at a coffee shop or on the plane. But I know from meeting countless travelers throughout the years that most foreign tourists don't plan their trips to Japan all that well. Most people just don't have the time, the inclination, or the computer skills, so they end up winging it. Now, winging it is actually my natural travel style, but Japan is not the country for it, especially during the busy seasons. Many travellers come away from Japan feeling overwhelmed by the crowds and the complexity of the rail system, and underwhelmed by their experiences, especially considering how much their trips cost them. It's frustrating to see how many tourists turn up to Japan intending to travel all over the country without a Japan Rail Pass, which as I discuss in the book is one of the world's best travel bargains, and is essential for most but not all visitors to the country. And vegans and vegetarians often become overwhelmed by difficulties finding food if they haven't planned in advance, which is so sad because Japanese vegan food is among the best in Asia, if you know where to find it. Many travellers, for example, don't try the best vegan restaurants like Kanga'an because they don't realise that they need to reserve their meals there at least three days in advance, which is normal for high-end vegan restaurants in Japan. It's also frustrating to see tourists turning up to the best attractions at the busiest times. As long as you reserve your tickets on the Sagano Romantic train early enough, then the nearby historic district of Arashiyama is so spread out that it can be comfortably visited on busy days, even public holidays, especially if you walk through the string of beautiful and usually quiet temples in the nearby mountains. But turn up to the beautiful 400-year-old Himeji Castle on a public holiday and you'll probably find it looking like this. And Higashiyama in Kyoto, whose tiny sun Nenzaka is the busiest street in Japan, also needs to be visited on a quiet weekday to appreciate the beauty of this footwork through the heart of the old city. This vegan travel guides project grew out of my two blogs for Taiwan and Japan, which I've kept for the last decade. Back in the days when people actually read blogs, these were among the most read internet sites on veganism for both of these countries. As well as posts about food and restaurants, I also began to post some suggested outings which combined tourist attractions with nearby vegan restaurants. These became some of my most popular pages, and they inspired me to write the vegan travel guide to Taiwan in 2015. Even as a first attempt which didn't cover the whole country, and even though I only ever advertised it on my blogs, I've sold hundreds of copies and received all four and five star reviews from vegan and vegetarian travellers around the world. One of my favourite places in Japan is the historic town of Koyasan. While it's a pilgrimage site for many Japanese, you don't need to be Buddhist or Japanese to enjoy staying at a temple and dining on their delectable shojinidori cuisine. And when temple accommodation is combined with two meals, it becomes excellent value for money. 
Visitors to the town can also explore the beautiful thousand-year-old graveyard and visit the tomb of Kukai, Japan's most revered and influential monk, who is also one of the country's first strong proponents of vegetarianism. But I've never actually met a foreign vegan or vegetarian who went to Khoisan because so few people know about it. Now, one of the reasons that travel guides have gone into decline is that many travellers, especially millennials like myself and younger, prefer to use online resources, which are more interactive and are usually free. But vegan travel guides offer the best of both worlds. They're complete in and of themselves, without any advertisements, and they work offline. But I've designed them to integrate with online resources rather than compete with them. So if you do choose to buy a SIM card in Japan or set up global roaming, then the excellent Japan Guide and other websites, Happy Cow and Google Maps are all just a click away. So how does the guidebook work? Producing, storing and distributing books in the traditional publishing system is impractical for a guide like this because the information in it changes too quickly. So at this stage it's only available as an ebook on Amazon's Kindle platform because this way I can easily update it as restaurants and attractions change. The book can be read on virtually all Android and Apple devices and also on Windows PCs. Of course, it also works with Amazon's own Kindle e-readers, but the maps and tables won't show up as clearly and the links won't open. I suggest downloading the Kindle app on both a smartphone and either an Android tablet or an iPad if you bring one with you to Japan. The text and especially the maps are easier to read on a larger screen, but it can also be useful to have it open on a phone as you move around so that you can follow the itineraries and click on the directions links to bring up Google Maps or show the Japanese addresses to passers-by if you need further help with directions. One of the few complaints I've had about my Taiwan guidebook, which I thought was fair since I classified as a travel guide, is that I don't recommend many hotels. Now, in response to that, in the Vegan Japan Travel Guide, I do recommend a few hotels I've stayed at in Kyoto, and most importantly, I recommend Vegan Minshuku Sunbiki Neko, where I am here, this traditional Japanese vegan B&B. But I don't recommend specific hotels elsewhere because everyone has their own budgets and expectations when it comes to accommodation. Prices fluctuate rapidly, and virtually all hotels in Japan have clean, functional rooms and are safe and comfortable to stay at. Instead, I discuss international and domestic booking sites and the many different types of accommodation, including traditional ryokans and minshukus like this one, business hotels and their more upmarket equivalents, hostels, Airbnb-style apartments, and the famous, or should it be infamous, capsule hotels. This guidebook is intended for non-Japanese first-time visitors to Japan. If you saw everything in this guidebook, it would probably take around three weeks to a month, but most visitors don't go everywhere and some attractions are seasonal. To see everything in Kansai, which includes Kyoto, Osaka, Nara, Kobe, Himeji, and Koyasan, would take around 10 days, but I recommend that everyone spend at least three days in Kyoto and choose some other cities based on time and interest. As for here in Tokyo, I packed the main tourist attractions into four itineraries, which could be seen in a day each, but if you visited all recommended attractions, including Disneyland and Disney Sea, you could easily spend over a week in the capital. The Around Tokyo chapter includes day or overnight trips to the beautiful historic port city of Yokohama and the nearby old capitals of Kamakura and Nikko. I also include the old trading town of Kawagoe and the nearby all vegetarian Alishan Organic Cafe, which is located beside a beautiful swimmable river in the Inaka or countryside. The book also includes climbing Mount Fuji and the nearby town of Hakone, which is famous for its views of the sacred mountain from a range of novel public transport systems. But this first guide doesn't include the beautiful Fuji 5 Lakes area, which is difficult to explore without private transport. Speaking of mountains, I also cover Nagano Prefecture, including the Hapo-One Ski Resort, a former Olympic site with a vegetarian and almost vegan cafe right on the slopes, and the medieval castle city of Matsumoto, as well as the tourist town of Katarizawa, which has been an escape for wealthy expatriates and Tokyoites for over a century, and is one of Japan's most enchanting vegan restaurants. Most tourists also go to Hiroshima, which is obviously important for its tragic history. Besides the atomic bomb-related sites, I cover the sacred island of Miyajima, whose ceremonial gate is one of the most photographed scenes in Japan. I also include Kagoshima, a beautiful port city at the southern tip of the Japanese mainland, which is famous for its active volcano. At the other end of Japan, I cover Sapporo, the capital city of Hokkaido, which has been a vegan hotspot in Japan for many years, and two nearby snow resorts. Niseko is a snow mecca for Australians who fly in and take over the town in winter. The Furano Ski Resort, which is further inland, receives some of the best powder snow in Japan, if not the whole world, and the town has its own vegetarian restaurant. 
It also attracts millions of tourists in the summer when it comes alive with flowers, many of them growing on the ski fields. While vegan travel guides are written from a vegan perspective, of course I welcome everyone to use them. For vegetarians, plant-based and other health-conscious eaters, I believe this guidebook will be much more useful than a mainstream travel guide. In future, I hope to better support followers of other diets, particularly the Jane diet, which is the focus of Veggie Herb Saga here, my favorite restaurant in Tokyo. And I also hope to better support the Oriental Vegan Diet and people with allergies and intolerances. Whether or not you use my guidebook, I wish you a good, safe trip to Japan. Thank you.